Welcome to this episode of our Above the Clouds podcast. Uh, I hope that these are very helpful for you to make bhakti a very much experienced uh, thing in your life. Not a theoretical concept, but something that you relish and that empowers and, and uh, inspires you. Today we will hear about the amazing potency of bhakti, uh, but first let me give you the context. As we have heard, the great King Maharaj Bharata gave up everything while he was in the prime of his life. He let go of his beautiful wife, his nice children, great friends and an enormous empire. He did this because he felt the power of the attraction to Krishna. Prabhupada says the name of Krishna is Krishna because he is so attractive that for his sake the pure devotee can give up anything that in this material world even if very, very dear. But we also heard that there were obstacles, temporary blocks in uh, our Maharaj Bharata's life. Uh, Prabhupada said, somehow or other the king became affectionate to a little deer and falling from his position had to accept the body of a deer in his next life. Now, while he was in his body of a deer, the amazing potency of bhakti came into his life. I will quote the verse. Even though in the body of a deer, Maharaj Bharata, Bharata did not forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, when he was giving up the body of a deer, he loudly uttered the following prayer. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is sacrificed personified. Yajnaya. He gives the results of ritualistic activity. He is the protector of religious systems, the personification of mystic yoga, the source of all knowledge, the controller of the entire creation, and the super soul in every living entity. He's so beautiful and attractive. And then let us please focus on the situation. These are the last words of a dying uh, a deer. I'm quitting this body, offering obeisances unto him and hoping that I may perpetually engage in his transcendental loving service. Uttering this, Maharaj Bharata left his dear body. Uh, it is described in Sanskrit, Hasyam. <laughs> he was smiling while his consciousness was focused on glorifying Krishna with various holy names. Narana, Narayanaya Haraye Nama Iti Udharam. This is noteworthy. Jiva Goswami quotes this verse in his Bhakti Sandavas and he says, At the time of death, and moreover, in the body of a deer, it is absolutely impossible to us utter such words. That Bharata was able to do so proves the self-manifesting nature of bhakti appearing in the form of the glorification spoken by him. This self-manifested potency of bhakti, where the holy name on its own 
arrives on the tongue and in the vocal cords of a person, or in this case a deer, who is not able to speak such uh, words, nor such transcendent words, mm, this potency of bhakti is truly amazing. Uh, Srila Rupa Goswami speaks about this in his famous verse, Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Grayam Indriyai. Mm. The material senses actually cannot speak Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. And they also can't appreciate them. When a conditioned soul, however, is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the holy name and taste the remnants of the Lord's food. The tongue is purified and one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. The same thing happened to Gajendra, the elephant. He had also been a great devotee in his previous life and he had unfortunately also given up his uh, spiritual uh, practices. Mm, but then the self-manifesting nature of bhakti uh, performed another miracle. It is said that at the time of his death, Gajendra fixed his mind on his heart with perfect intelligence and chanted a mantra. He was an elephant body. He learned in his previous life. Let us consider this. Such an extraordinary thing can only happen if some special force enters the mouth of the deer or of the elephant, and for that matter, the mouth of any conditioned soul. It is the force of bhakti, the bhakti shakti, which makes uh, such miracles possible. I always speak in my seminars about this. I remind my audience that we are material beings how can we take the all-pure name of Krishna, who is identical with Krishna? This is only possible if some special Bhakti Shakti facilitates this miracle. Even in the body of a deer who has no vocal apparatus <laughs> that is suited to express itself with such words mm. for the bhakti shakti it is possible to appear there so that this idea speaks uh, wonderful shlokas i have seen with my own eyes uh, something like this i was once sitting at the banks of mother ganga near deva prayag uh, and I was uh, reading the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. There a specific process of chanting the sacred syllable Om is mentioned. And I uh, chanted Om. Then, then I noticed a herd of silver hair langur monkeys coming down from the mm, forest to drink. And the, their leader said about five meters or so on a rock next to me. So as I was chanting, oh, I could hear someone else chanting Om right next to me. When I looked, I saw it was the monkey. I continued chanting. My curiosity was awakened and from time to time looked over and yes, there was the monkey chanting home. Uh, later, uh, when all the monkeys 
uh, went away from the Ganga and into the forest, I saw this amazing monkey mm, turning around just before he entered the dark sh shades of the forest and looking at me and then changing the form into that of a yogi. <laughs> he looked at me once again, chanted Om uh, with a smile and again uh, took on a, a hidden form, a form where he was mm, in disguise, the form of that silver-haired monkey and went into the forest. Yes! By the power of bhakti, the holy name can appear even in the throat of an uh, animal. Now the lesson here is that this phenomena happens especially when you turn your face to Krishna in service. Sometimes the chanting can be dry. Sometimes we seem to not be able to complete our rounds or chant for a long mm, time in kirtan because at that uh, moment our brain and our whole being is pervaded with material consciousness. However, when one turns to Krishna with service, and that's uh, Rupa Goswami's mm, uh, recommendation, the tongue gets purified, the consciousness gets purified, and Krishna appears. What can we practically do to chant like Maharaj Bharata, where the Bhakti Shakti appears? What can we practically do to chant in a service attitude? Well, it is quite simple. You sit down for chanting, that's the best. You can also do this while you walk, but uh, it works best when you sit down. And then just meditate for a moment that in my truest being, I'm a servant of Krishna. The next step, Krishna is my own only master and suridang salva bhutanam my friend and the third step is I offer my chanting as a service to him you will see when you purify your consciousness through these three steps it will be easier uh, for the bhakti shakti to work uh, on, uh, on you and uh, with you and in you. Another idea to do service to the Holy Name would be to spread the Holy Name uh, to others, to make them fortunate. This here is a wonderful principle which we learn, that bhakti is something entirely spiritual. Uh, it is given to us. Uh, it comes from uh, up and flows to us a little bit like Mother Ganga and purifies us and empowers us. Thank you very much for listening and I see you very soon in the next Above the Clouds. <laughs>